All right, John, thanks for sending in a video. I'm gonna start by just looking at your side view here and just see what your throw looks like. Before I, before I jump into it, I, I see one big problem in your throw and it appears in multiple different places. So I'm gonna give you different places that you can work on it, different ways that you can work on it. But this is the big thing that I want you to focus on before moving on to something else. And that is that your hips are rotating much too early. You can see even even right here your hips are already turned back away from the target and then they remain all the way back here and you're over rotated. I'll chat with you a little bit about why I think that is, what causes it and the effects that it creates as well. This your full extension here, foot still on the ground full extension your full extension you know might have been here might have been here but you're still up in the air a little bit you want to try to time this to where your foot is hitting the ground as you're getting to full extension that'll help time and not not only will it help time your uncoiling but it will also help you have something to coil against and it'll create more lag which creates more whip in your throat you can feel what I'm talking about by standing up shoulder width apart, feet shoulder width apart, or maybe put them in a throwing stance or whatnot. Rotate your hips forward and keep your shoulders in the same spot and you can feel a bit of tension being built there, but your body will let you turn your hips first. However, if you pick up your front foot, your right foot, and turn your hips, you can feel your shoulders just naturally start to swing through prematurely. And so that's the sort of thing that will happen if you have your foot still up in the air at your full reach back because your body knows, hey, it's time to go. Instead of having natural tension here, this is your full reach back. I mean, you do have some, but your hips are about right here and your shoulders are about right here. You do a good job of getting your left shoulder back. So there is some tension created here in the difference. But again, if you look at some of these fellas, you can see when Eagle is at, is at his strike point, for example, his hips are almost parallel to his target, shoulders perpendicular. So there's going to be a lot of tension created across his back and down through his leg right here for his body to just naturally uncoil. So you want to coil against your body back and then you want to just let that, that coiled spring just spring open because what you're getting to here you still get hip shoulder separation even as you go through see you're throwing your hips first have your hips here and your shoulder here now but what you're having to do at this point is what I call brute forcing it and you have created lag that will create whip doing this but it won't be as effective it doesn't utilize your body's natural elasticity is if you just keep your your belt buckle pointed towards the camera throughout all throughout this point so like i said keep this foot turned more that will help you keep your eyes turned forward that will help you and you will feel the difference whenever you pull your shoulders back if your hips are still here instead of here where they are right now you will feel that difference in tension across your shoulder and back as you start to work on this, you're probably going to start shanking some stuff because it's going to mess with your timing and you know, just throw your normal throw out of whack. That's okay. We shank things for a while, work towards a greater goal, sort of like getting sore when you're working out. Eventually, <laughs> you'll get over it and you'll be better because of it. Your arm swing here, you go up and then down and then up. And then start to go back down but you don't want to release into the ground so at the very end you have to toss it up there are issues with this that I would like to explain so to start well with this pump honestly I don't care about this pump you can keep it you can put this thing over your head if you want to really what I want to point out is once you get to your reach back once you have this set you want to be pulling okay you set it even a little lower here. You want to be pulling from this line straight forward because you can move faster in a straight line than you can if you are zigzagging. I mean, 
You know, go for a punch. You want to punch in a straight line. You don't swirl. You don't. Here, I'll illustrate this as well. You don't want to punch in a straight line, not swiggling your arm around like this, because you can punch faster that way. Similarly, you can throw a disc faster that way. So we want to keep the disc on this straight line, but you can see you go up, then you go back down, and then you have to correct to go flat at the very end. So what's happening here is, as you go up through this point of your throw, your body is not squiggly line energy, your body is creating straight line energy up in this direction. You know you don't want to throw up here. So now, as your body is starting to reach this point, it's having to say, hey, we need to get this thing back on this line down here. So we need to send forces that go down, that counteract this force that's going up so that the disc can go down. Obviously, when you have forces working against each other, that's going to slow the movement of this disc down instead of everything going in a straight line. Now we have some going straight, some forces going up, and some forces going back down, and we need more going back down than we have going back up. So you're working against yourself here. And then again, as you start to bring it down, now your body's saying, okay, we're gonna go down on this line and wrist. If you could just snap straight down in an efficient manner, the disc would go down this direction. But again, you know you don't want to throw it into the ground. So your body now has to say, even at this point, we have to slow down a little bit and we have to send forces back up as you get down to this point so that the disc can end up going in this direction. So what this will cause, like I said, you're changing direction. And first law of physics, anytime you do that, you have to input energy from the outside and that will necessarily sort of put on the brakes in your throw. So at a very micro level, you're having to decelerate over and over as you're trying to accelerate through the throw. What this also will do is because you have forces that are going down and up and down and up all throughout the throw, even here at your release, you're going to have a lot of inconsistencies with this final angle. Sometimes it'll be slightly up, sometimes it'll be slightly down, sometimes you'll hit it just right and it'll be perfectly straight. But you're going to have inconsistencies in your release angle and in your release trajectory. The other thing that you will see oftentimes, especially if you're going on a downward motion and then an upward motion to finish your throw, is you'll see nose really you'll see nose up releases and this will kill your distance. You're gonna have more wind resistance. The disc isn't gonna go as far because it's not designed to fly that way. I think that, like I said, this comes from this early hip rotation. You fix that, but it ends up affecting your throw here at the end and your follow through. So get this extra little push down the fairway. Get a little bit extra distance there as well. I wanna talk about some good things that I see you are doing. Your reach back is in a good spot you have the disc far enough away from your body, you have your foot far enough away from your body to allow your disc to travel through, not much rounding issues to, to address or take care of. You do a great job of pushing this left shoulder back to get that coil backwards. Take these, you know, five to 10 something things that uh, I pointed out for you to work on. And like I said, if you get 10, 20 feet from each of them, you work on even five different things. You get 10 to 20 feet on each of them. In a couple weeks, you're gonna be throwing 50 to 100 feet farther. That's insane. I would take that any day of the week. So be patient with it. Try to work on one at a time. Focus on the things that you can work on first, as in early in your throw. Don't worry about your release point before you fix the very first step in your throw because your release point's going to be affected by everything that comes before it. Keep grinding, and I'm excited to see what results you get.